First of all, I know the title of this video may sound hypocritical since I'm literally releasing an audiobook this year about Spider-Man set in high school based around his origin story, but partly writing that book has given me the inspiration for this video and I'll explain why. Spider-Man has always been a high school student and always will be. Spider-Man is the character that everyone associates with being a teenager. In fact, he was one of the first teenage superheroes that weren't a sidekick back when he was first created. Spider-Man is a fascinating character, and some of his best stories come from him being in high school. Like his early run by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, the Ultimate Spider-Man comic run, Spectacular Spider-Man, the MCU version of Spider-Man, etc. However, we're running out of stories to tell with Spider-Man in high school. And this is why Peter Parker, being a high school student, is slowly becoming something that is increasingly harder to do. Now, I mentioned my audiobook about Spider-Man, which will be set in high school. Now, don't worry, this video isn't just to plug that piece of content. It actually has some relevance. When I was writing the book, I wanted to do a Spider-Man origin story. And the reason for this is because I wanted to have my own version of Spider-Man, something that could define him as my own, as my own creation. And the more I thought about ways I could tell the origin story without treading what had already been done, I found it more and more difficult to not repeat stuff that we've already seen before. And I eventually figured it out. And I won't give away any spoilers here, but trust me when I say it became increasingly difficult with the amount of Spider-Man stories with Peter Parker in high school to do something completely original and something that we have never seen before. Obviously, with Spider-Man origin stories and stuff where Peter Parker is in high school, there are certain things that you can't avoid doing. The issue is, when it comes to him being in high school, there is certain ground that you do have to cover for it to be a Spider-Man story, quote-unquote. Because, yeah, you can stray away from the source material, and I know there will be a few people in the comments who will tell me that that's an option, but the further you divert from the source material, the less it becomes Spider-Man. So to draw a line at where I think it's acceptable to stray away from the source material and where it's not, I set out a list of things that you need to do in a Spider-Man origin story slash high school career for it to be Spider-Man. Anything beyond these is completely fine to change up and do differently, but I think these are the five key aspects of the character to make it work. Number one, Uncle Ben's death slash the great responsibility story. Number two, the Parker money problem. Number three, good high school friendship slash relationship dynamics. Number four, Peter gets bit by a radioactive spider. Number five, the villain has some kind of personal connection to Peter Parker. The third and last one are a bit touch and go, and they don't really have to be abided to, but I always feel like stories that tap into the idea of a good friendship dynamic or a good relationship dynamic or where Peter has a closeness with his villain in their personal life is so much more interesting. Because a key part of Spider-Man's life is that he has people in his life that he loves, but always ends up disappointing because he's always Spider-Man. Spider-Man. And I feel like when that aspect isn't in there, it makes for a less interesting story. Like I said, these two rules, you don't really have to abide by them, but they are there and they make for much better Spider-Man stories. Anyway, out of those five aspects, how many adaptations of Spider-Man can you name that have at least three of these traits? Spectacular Spider-Man, Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, Tasm 1 and 2, The Home Trilogy, Ultimate Spider-Man Cartoon, Marvel Spider-Man from 2017, pretty much everything. And because these aspects of the same story have been covered on so many different grounds, recent adaptations have tried to spice it up a little bit by throwing something different into the mixer. Like, for example, the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of Spider-Man having the responsibility speech be given to Aunt May instead of Uncle Ben. Or in Marvel Spider-Man 2017's case, having Peter attend Horizon High instead of Midtown High. But at the end of the day, these are just light spins on what we already have. In the MCU's case, no matter how different it's trying to make itself from the other adaptations of the character, has still got those fundamental aspects which are at the core of what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. Like the responsibility speech, for example, yes, Uncle Ben never gives it to Peter, but Aunt May relays the same information in Spider-Man No Way Home which is a key part and discourse of the character. And how many times have we seen the responsibility story done with or without Uncle Ben? A million times. And I guess what the whole point of this video boils down to is that even though you can change things up, do things differently, at the end of the day, we've seen the same story a million times over. It's time to move on. 
Eventually, you're going to run out of things to twist or adapt before you start tampering with the core elements of what makes the character special. Eventually, he will not be Spider-Man anymore. He'll just be a different version of Peter Parker that happens to just use the name Spider-Man. But don't get me wrong, I'm under the impression that you can change the character however you like in a Spider-Man origin story as long as you don't strip away the main theme of the character, which I think largely fits into those aspects I listed earlier. So what should Spider-Man adaptations do in the future to avoid this problem of oversaturation of the origin story? Keep Spider-Man an adult. This is something that the comics have largely failed at during Spider-Man's existence. The comics do not understand that the audience wants Spider-Man to grow up and be with Mary Jane and have kids, but countless times they split Spider-Man from Mary Jane or set him back to his youth somehow just so younger readers can still relate to the character. We're at a point where younger audiences' first exposure to Spider-Man won't even be the comics, so it's not even like it matters anymore. They'll just be exposed to a Spider-Man cartoon or even a movie. I don't see the obsession with keeping Spider-Man young anymore in the comics. The comics should just let Spider-Man grow up, and the movies and the shows should do the same. Every single reboot or new adaptation of the character doesn't have to start from the baseline. I'd love to see a Spider-Man show or a movie that takes place in Spider-Man's adult years, because that's something we haven't actually ever seen before. And the good thing about having a story take place 10 plus years into the future is that the themes that I listed before that are crucial for a Spider-Man origin slash high school story can be taken very lightly with an adult Spider-Man, meaning that you don't have to abide by those rules as closely as you would when making said origin story. Making Spider-Man an adult means you can explore themes and ideas that even the comics have never or rarely even touched on. Like, what if Peter Parker was a full-time teacher or a scientist? What if Peter was married for 10 plus years? What if Peter had a family? What if his daughter or his son was Spider-Girl or Spider-Boy alongside him? All of these themes are not present in the 616 universe simply because they won't let Peter grow up. And the same goes for adaptations too. One of my favorite examples of a Peter Parker adaptation that follows this premise is Peter B. Parker from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. B. Parker is the type of Spider-Man I'm talking about that would make so many interesting stories. And it's astonishing that not one show or film has even considered being aimed around a character just like that. Peter B is the best example. I would say Spider-Man PS4 as well, but he's kind of in that transitional stage where he still has a lot of the same aspects as high school Spider-Man, except he's not really in a high school. And I'm actually excited to see how they evolve that character going forward in the second and the third game, because I think the groundwork has been laid for him to evolve into an adult Peter Parker, just like Peter B. Parker. The groundwork is definitely there, and I really hope they do go in that direction for that character. But at the moment, Peter B. Parker is the only example of this. He has relationship troubles, but we know that at least him and Mary Jane still know each other and are together. We know in Across the Spider-Verse, he has a kid. We know he's kind of retired as Spider-Man and has been put through the woodwork many times before. He probably has a full-time job as well. He has bigger responsibilities. I also wonder what would happen if one of his old foes came back to wreak havoc on New York. How would Peter react? Would he cower or would he go out to fight and protect his wife and daughter? Like I said, there are so many different scenarios and interesting stories that you could tell with a Peter B. Parker and an adult Spider-Man. I think after everything that we've seen from a high school Spider-Man at this point in time, just makes it so much more interesting when Peter is an adult, just purely because there are not many stories that have been told where he is an adult. We've seen Peter Parker in high school a million times and we're running out of ways to tell that origin story before it gets too convoluted. It's time to move on. It's time to start making stories about an older Peter Parker. I guess at the end of the day, Marvel Comics and showrunners and producers want to make movies and shows that are aimed at the general populace. A young kid isn't going to want to sit in a movie theater to watch a two-hour movie about a 40-year-old Spider-Man. But I think we're getting to a point in which it seems there are no more great ways to tell an origin story without rehashing what we've already seen before. I have to say, I am excited for Spider-Man freshman year because that seems to be a very different take on the character's origin and I'm excited to see how that's told. But even then, 
That show is going to have so many different things that we've already seen in a million other shows. Like for example, Peter Parker in Midtown High with his friends and his friend group. We're going to see how he got bitten by the spider. We're going to see his relationship with Norman Osborn. We're probably going to see the Parker money problem come into it as well, as that is a very important and key aspect of what makes Peter Parker, Peter Parker from the comic books. So yeah, like I said, no matter how different it is, we've basically seen the story a million times before. But largely, as I said, I feel as if we should move on and tell different stories with this amazing character. Like I mentioned, an older Peter Parker would really make a good show or movie. But unfortunately, we may never, ever get one. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to hit the like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and make sure to hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you do not miss any more video essays. I post them every single week. On the left side of the screen, you can see a video that's been personally chosen for you based off other videos that you already enjoy. And on the right side of the screen, you can see my most recent upload. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and peace.